new 40K is upon us. The 10th edition of the venerable game promises faster, smoother gameplay and simpler, not simplified. We find out if that's the case as newcomer Rebecca takes on veteran Space Marine Steve in this, our first ever 10th edition battle report. This is 40K in 40 Minutes, Season 5. Greetings fans, JT McDowell here, and boy oh boy do we have a fantastic game for you today. Most of you will recognize Rebecca from our First Steps 40k video series we shot with her, Steve, Nick, and Rahul Kohli. She's bringing in Leviathan Bugs to nom nom on some Space Marine Steve-led Ultramarines. Special thanks to Games Workshop for the advanced copy of the Leviathan box set. We had a blast painting them up for this report and are really looking forward to see how they play. Hi, I'm Rebecca and I'm here to play some more 40k. I have a dream, and it is to beat Steve, and it's going to be today. We haven't faced each other since we played together in Kill Team, and so today is the day that I will beat him finally. And I'm going to do it in his house, I'm going to do it in front of his friends, and it's going to be glorious. The Tyranids consists of the new Screamer Killer, a Neuro Tyrant, a Flying Tyranid Prime, the new Psychophage, 20 Termagants, some Ripper Swarms, 5 Barbgaunts, 11 Neurogaunts, and 3 Von Ryan Leaper Lictors. What an amazing set, and they were super fun to paint and build. Rebecca has chosen to give her Wing Prime adaptive biology. He gets a 5-up Feel No Pain that becomes a 4-up once he's wounded. The 10th edition is supposed to be easier for new people, so let's put that to the test. I think I'd be a really good candidate for that. One of the ones that I took to right away is the Psychophage. I love the look of this one. It's got a scary mouth, it's got tentacles, it's got a hooked body, almost like a scorpion. It looks really freaky and I can't wait to see what it does. Hey everybody, this is Space Marine Steve from Play on Tabletop and Tack back there is eye rolling because I start every single clip the same. We're just gonna play them all. Hey everybody, this is Space Marine Steve from Play on Tabletop. I get to play against my very good friend, Rebecca. Oh, and it's a big day. Oh, it's a big day. Why? Because this is not only the start to season five of Play on Tabletop, but I get to play the Ultramarines of the Play on Tabletop Studio, and we get to add a whole new section to it. We are playing the Leviathan box set. The Ultramarines consist of a librarian, a Terminator captain, an apothecary biologist, a Phobos armored lieutenant with copy weapon, five Terminators, five Stern Guard, and, and two squads of five Infernus Marines. She's got lots of swarms, and I've got all kinds of flamethrowers, 10 of them to be exact. So I am, uh, I, I think I'm doing pretty good. Those gaunts are not gonna get too close to me, I think. Today we are playing Only War, right out of the Leviathan rulebook. Players place four objectives, and holding these will score victory points starting on turn two. Most victory points wins the game, however, should either player wipe out the other completely, score won't matter, and they will win. Each objective is worth one victory point to a maximum of three per turn, starting again on turn two. We have hills and craters today, but that's it, that's all. You'll get to see how simple terrain is in 10th edition. I, for one, welcome the change. Both players have placed their objectives and declared their battle formations. Steve is playing the Gladius Task Force from the Leviathan box set, and Rebecca is playing the Invasion Fleet, also from Leviathan. And then now what we need to do is establish who is attacker and who's defender. Here we go. Ha! Oh, <laughs> you're the attacker, which means you're over here on the left. And, okay. Uh, I'm the defender, so I'm over here on the right. All right. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put uh, whatever unit attachments that we have, so we're putting characters inside of units, and we're going to place units into reserves. I've actually uh, decided to not put anything into reserves, so I'm gonna put it all on the table. It's a brand new box set. I wanna play with it all, all game. Nothing's going in reserves. All on the table, baby. Yeah. I think for today, my strategy is going to be paying attention to the very top of the game where we start placing our armies. I feel like I need to watch what Steve is doing, which one he hasn't put on the table yet, which ones are going on first, and perhaps use that to my advantage to placing my own army. Steve has chosen to attach his librarian to his Terminator squad, and Rebecca is deep striking her Ripper Swarms and has attached the Neurotyrant to the Nurgle Gaunts. 
Attached units are a big thing in 10th. I'm excited to see how they play. All right, well, uh, so you are the attacker, and what that means is that you get to deploy the first unit. Okay. Just right up to the front. Going like right up. Yeah. And I'm gonna be like. So I'm gonna take my first unit of Infernus for me. Go, Rebecca. Okay. What are you doing? We, we don't have points. This is my Neuro Tyrant. And bloop. A unit of Stern Guard veterans. We're gonna go right back here. The psychophage. Yeah. So we want to put the psychophage somewhere close to these guys. It's pretty far. Like you could put him right behind, and it would be fine. Right. Yeah. There you go. So I'm gonna use uh, my other unit of furnace marines. All right, Rebecca. Next one's all yours. Now I'm going to place my barbagons. They're barbagons. They're all named barb. Um, <laughs> They're all named Barb. These are all my Barbie guns. They're, fr they're from the East Coast. <laughs> I'm going to place my apothecary right here. Yeah. Rebecca has deployed her Von Ryan Leapers very forward, very aggressive, and Steve has countered with his lone operative Phobos Lieutenant similarly, but on the opposite side of the table. This should make for an interesting first turn. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, he's down. Okay. So I'm going to take my Terminators, and my Terminators are going to go right here. Now this fella, if he went over there, yes, then he would be in He'd synapse be in the of all yeah. of those, all yeah. of these guys, right? He would dish out synapse pretty big. I'm going to take my Captain and Terminator armor, and the Captain and Terminator armor is going to go right over here. Boom. Now what happens in the process, this is like 40k's noon for me again. Like mm -hmm. I've played 40k for a long time, but like we're, I'm about to take my like first roll of 10th edition. Yeah, and it's going to be all the more devastating when you lose your first game at it too. Oh, okay. I feel like I want to go second. Nope. I have to go first. I'm not a huge fan of having to go first. I was really hoping that she would have to go first, come out of hiding, and then I would get better shooting lanes at her. However, that didn't happen. It's okay. I'll just move up a little bit, maybe try and get some shots at those Vaughn Ryan's leapers, and we'll see if we can do a little bit of damage here at the beginning of the game. I get to go first. You get to go second. This is the first game of 10th edition. Oh, I'm so excited. It. Have yourself a great game. You too. Today's episode is sponsored by GameMat.eu. If you're looking for everything or anything to build the battlefield of your dreams, GameMat.eu has you covered. From beautiful neoprene mouse pad style mats to pre-painted terrain and all things in between, they have everything you need ready to go right out of the box. Make sure to check out the link in the description below and tell them Play On sent you. Prior to the beginning of the round, Rebecca's choosing Swarming Instincts. That's going to give sustained hits versus infantry and swarms to her entire army. So I'm going to be sort of careful here. I got to make sure you don't get the pounce on me because uh, you can do a lot of damage. And I don't like that. So uh, we start with the command phase. Start at turn one and both players gain a command point. Steve choosing Oath of Moment target, the Von Ryan Leapers. No doctrine choice for Steve this turn. He only gets three and he decided not to use one now. So Space Marines now in 10th Editioner is all about pre-planning, making sure you know what's going to shoot what. And so I Odes of Moment, the Von Ryan's Leapers, and I think I'm going to be able to get the Stern Guard into a good position to shoot at them, and then maybe with the Dreadnought 2 to try and finish them off if that happens. We'll see. We'll see. I think I can do it. Now I'm going to go through my movement phase. And anyways, we're going to go this way with my Stern Guard veterans. And then I'm gonna take my unit of Terminators. They are just gonna waddle forward a little bit. And my uh, Infernus squad that's uh, hiding behind this stack of ruins here is going to advance one whole inch, Ooh. phenomenal. One Infernus squad advances in its movement phase and everyone else is moving up, looking to pop those Von Ryan's leapers. My captain is just going to go here. 
And then this Inferno Squad is going to be like as well. And then I am going to go into the shooting freeze. Yes. Stern Guard targeting the Leapers now. They have stealth, so they're going to be minus one to be hit. But Oath of Moment is going to give them reroll everything. The combi weapons, one of them is in rain, in rapid fire range, and one of them is not. So three times being shot, uh, shooting you. So I'm hitting you on fives, rerolling. Uh, so two hit. I has anti infantry four up. Anti infantry four plus, devastating, meaning any wound of a four up is going to be a critical wound, and devastating makes critical wounds mortal wounds. Uh, so I have a heavy bolter. That heavy bolter is also devastating wounds, and that means two lictors are dead and one is left on one wound. Oh, oh, oh yes! Stern Guard veterans, sustained hits, devastating wounds for a devastatingly handsome Space Marine captain. Ooh, I love it. I'm going to then take my Ballista's Dreadnought, and the Ballista's Dreadnought is going to shoot over here at your bomb. I'm going to go with the last cannon first. Fours because of your stealth. Reroll it. On twos. Good. So two AP minus three wounds. So I need to roll two sixes you to, roll to two sixes. save my guy over Correct. there. Correct. All right. No. She does not do it. She does not do it. An ideal. A lot of damage to it. Oh no. The Von Ryan Leapers are gone. That first army getting taken away is always, it's always hard to see within the first turn, just an entire unit get wiped out. And then I uh, go into my charge phase. I don't have any charges to declare. I go to the fight phase. There's no uh, nobody in engagement range right now, so nobody's fighting. And so I end my first turn. That was a devastating first turn for the Tyranids. It wasn't great for you, no. Mm. The fact that they're gone right away is not great, but that being said, I'm not out of this game yet. There's still a lot of battle to go. And as these turn one, we see no score yet, and command points still sit at one each. Let's see how Rebecca responds. Both players up to two command points, and it's time to get to stomping. Nobody needs to make any battle shock tests. This is where you would pick what units are gonna be synapsed with the bugs' brains. Mm. So I will choose these termagants. Yep. And the burb. Sounds good. All right. So now you can start moving stuff around. Now I can start moving. After watching what Steve did with his army, in my head, I'm thinking I need to advance my army as much as possible. But I also still felt a little bit nervous of putting them up front too much because they can't all reach Steve within range for shooting. It's gonna take me a couple turns to get there, but in my head, I just need to keep advancing them. I am just kind of going with the flow right now because aside from the Termagons, like, I don't know what any of her stuff does. Like, it's all brand new. So I will just have to assess each threat as it kind of pokes its head out and uh, we'll see what happens. So I'm going to advance my yeah. Termagant army. Here we go. Roll a die. Normally they move six plus two, two whole inches. Eight. Command reroll here to change that advance roll from a two into a one. Oh man, did Steve touch Rebecca's dice? Psychophage could advance. Yeah. Psychophage advances forward. So I'm just gonna move them normal, okay. six inches. Looks like she's trying to use that piece of terrain to hide behind. By rolling him, him to advance. Five. Five whole inches on the- So would um, they come neuro, with him? Yeah, Neuro Tyrant's unit. All one unit. Oops, plus another five. I am not gonna bring in my Ripper Swarm yet. I think Smart. I'm gonna hold off on yeah. that until I feel out. ready. Yep. All right, okay. so that means we're moving to the shooting phase. Yes. I'm going to use my Barb Guns and target them against the Infernus Marines because I think they're one of the biggest threats on the table. And I wanna take them out right away. Barb Guns target the Infernus Marines, D6 shots each, plus one more for being blasted a unit of five. That's 16 shots hitting on fours. <laughs> Oh, it's pretty good. <laughs> and you and you have sustained hits against infantry. All of your attacks against infantry because of the adaptation you did 
all those sixes, add in an extra one. Sustained hits because of swarming instincts, down go three Infernus Marines. They are also now disrupted, a special barb gaunt rule. They're gonna be minus two to charge to move in advance. The barb gods do what? What? Holy crap. Yes. So I killed three out of the five that were there. There's still another five somewhere else on this table, but I took out most of that unit. Screamer Killer has a range of 18 inches. Okay. So my Screamer can hit your Ballistis. My, yeah, my Ballistis Dreadnought. Your Ballistis Dreadnought. Yes. Screamer Killer now targets that Ballistis Dread. That's gonna force a Battle Shock test on the Dreadnought as well because of its special rule. He's got leadership six plus, but he's minus one and an eight succeeds. Nothing is in charge range, so that's it. that's it then. Because my army is based around close combat, once I get in there after a couple more turns, I'll be able to take him out. Solid back and forth round one. Both sides have taken losses. However, Steve is in a bit of a commanding position here in that he can dictate the pace a bit. He's got some breathing room as well, and Rebecca needs to get to grips with him to secure a victory. Losing any Marines is a bad trade-off. I don't like that. Space Marines are like a really elite army, and so every single time that you lose one, it hurts. I'm glad I didn't lose the whole unit, but those Barbagons, those have got to go. So I go to three whole command points. Oh, and I go to two. Devastator Doctrine for turn two, and Steve's gonna be able to advance and shoot with all of his weapons, not just assault weapons. Cool new Space Marine rule. He selects that big unit of Termagons for Oath of Moment. Steve's gonna test for Battle Shock on those two Infernus Marines, and he succeeds. Steve also holds one objective for one victory point. Time to, time to move around a little bit with my Stern Guard veterans here. Moving phase now, and Steve's advancing his Stern Guard towards that winged prime. I think I need to do a couple of things. One, I need to try and back off a little bit from the Screamer Killer and uh, give buy myself a little bit more shooting time. And I also want to try and collapse one of her flanks. I'm going to advance with my Terminators. Huzzah! Terminators are gonna reroll their advance for a command point. Steve's down to two remaining, and he gets another one! Oh, Steve definitely did touch those dice. You wasted way. all your hot rolls on that first yeah. round, Steve. Hey. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna take this second Inferno squad, and they are also gonna advance two whole inches. Scoot back this way a little bit. So the reason this squad's actually gonna move back this way is because if I move off of this objective and I just leave the apothecary here, they it, it is not gonna be great facing up against those Ripper squads, uh, but an Inferno squad, you don't wanna deep strike anywhere near them. Not at all. Move up. That's not. Ballista Dread is going to advance four whole inches. Terminator Captain is going to advance as well. Up. Oh, we're going to follow the Dreadnought. And then the, Infer the little baby Inferno squad is going to do the same thing. Three whole inches. They're going nine. And they're just going to follow up. Right next to the, right next to the cat. Uh, so my move phase is over, and then we'll go to my shooting phase. Shooting phase now, Steve spending Storm of Fire for one command point on his Terminators. He's gonna ignore cover and give them an extra AP down to one command point remaining. And then we're gonna shoot everything at these guns. Rebecca responds with rapid regeneration. Those Termagons are gonna get a five plus feel no pain. So every wound they take, they're gonna ignore on a five up. She's also down to one command point. I'll start with my assault cannon, so it shoots six times. Uh, six times. I hit on threes, but because you're my oldest of moment target, uh, my Fury of the First ability gives me plus one to hit, so I hit on twos. And then I reroll because of oldest of moment. On twos. Oh! Yikes. So I have doing four mortals so far, and then Storm Bolter. So these are all on twos, you're rolling. And then on threes. 11 saves to make from the Terminators. She makes one. Now, 14 wounds total on five up, feel no pain, and nine drop. 11 remaining in the unit now, and the Librarian's Bolter takes one down, and Smite kills five more. That's 15 kills in that squad. I am going to take my Sternguard veterans. I'm 
they're going to shoot at your turn at five. So I'm going to start with the heavy bolter, hitting on fours, and then two uh, stern guard bolt guns. These are hitting you on threes. Oops. Oh, it's not good. All of the mist. And then I've got combi weapons, which are rapid fire. All right, here we go. So this is on fours. And then these are anti-infantry four-ups, devastating wounds. Uh, so one devastating wound. Only one mortal wound and a five-up ignores it. I am gonna take my Phobos Lieutenant. There, that guy. Yep, Lieutenant Norris. And he's gonna shoot your Barbagons. Lieutenant with combi weapon into the Barbagons and no joy. So the Ballistus Dread is going to shoot everything at the Gons. It's gonna use a frag off its Ballistus Missile Launcher. So 2d6 shots. Rerolling the number of frag missiles, he's out of command points, but he gets an eight. So this is on threes, re-rolling, whoop, threes, re-rolling. Stormbolter into the Termagons as well, 10 four-ups, followed by five up field no pains, one more last cannon to save, one of the last two dudes, and no joy, only one Termagant left. Well, I was hopeful I'd be able to bring it down, but I guess not. <laughs> he didn't kill all my Termagants, I still have one left, still on the board. Maybe he'll be able to do something heroic? <laughs> if she fails her battle shock test, her objective control drops to zero. This is a cool thing. What happens is you're not able to hold any objectives. I have effectively, even though I didn't kill the unit, taken her off that point. And then I'm going to go to my charge fires, and I am going to charge the Barbagants with uh, Lieutenant Norris. So if you're charging at my Barbagants, my barbs. Your barbs. I'm gonna spend my last command point to put Two. this psychophage into Overwatch, and he's going to release or use all his weapons at Mr. Norris here. Auto hitting, strength six, AP one damage, one shots, and Steve takes a wound. I have three remaining, and I need to roll a seven or greater. And I don't do it with snake eyes. It's not going anywhere. Sucks he fails to charge. Sucks that she's gonna get to use those barbagons, but, but, I believe in Norris. All right, so uh, that is the end of my turn. Yeah. And as Steve's turn two sees neither player with any command points, but Steve has one victory point. Rebecca's turn two. So we each gain a command point. Screamer Killer and Barb Gaunts get the Synapse buff. The Termagants will test for Battleshock and they are Battleshocked. That failure means no victory point for her on that objective. So she only gains one this turn to make our game tied at one. So my Termagant failed the Battleshock test, which is okay, he's not removed from the board. Hopefully he'll pass it again next time, be able to do something. So the Termagant has now retreated. The Winged Prime sets up the charge to take out Steve's unit on the other side of the rock there. Hopefully he'll be able to deal some damage. I really need to start taking Steve off this board. Screamer Killer moving up now. She's got to get to grips with Steve right away. That last shooting phase was just devastating. Lieutenant with combi weapon using evade and survive. That's his ability to move once per turn if an enemy closes within nine inches. He's gonna move backwards. He's gonna make her think about where to send that screamer killer. So these guys will just all move, like, I guess. The psychophage is a bit out of position here, but she's gonna run it over to claim another objective. At Toughness 9, it's tough enough to hold an objective all on its own. We're going to bring out the Ripper Swarms. The Rippers drop into the back corner, forcing Steve to make some choices here. Now I will go into a shooting phase, right? So we'll start with the Screamer. Screamer Killer targeting those two Infernus Marines, and Steve rolls box cars to save. What is going on? Okay, now I will use my Neuro Tyrant to shoot at that same unit. Same squad. So seven, so you roll seven dice. Neuro Tyrant now, and Steve rolls trip sixes. Two. And one guy dies, this guy right here. I'm shooting the Barb Gaunts at the Terminator because they've got the longest range with their shooting weapons. It also disrupts them, so it gets minus two to his advance, to his charge, charge and to his move. 
Barbaguns firing into the Terminators, looking to thin that unit a bit and slow it down. Only one wound, but they are disrupted. That's going to make them minus two to move, advance, and charge. I think Rebecca knows if the Terminator's close with her, she's in trouble. So we go to then charges. Here we so go. So my winged Pyranid Prime is going to charge. My Stern Guard veterans. Stern Guard veterans. So I will yeah. roll two D6 die to Absolutely. see how far I charge. Oh, no. Oh, that is nine. So we just bump you right in because you're only two inches away. <laughs> Screamer Killer into the Ballistus Dread with an 11. Woohoo! The Screamer charges the Dreadnought, and I'm thinking it's going to work out pretty well. Nero Tyrant and its retinue charge the Phobos Lieutenant. Let's start here. So you're turning prime. Fight phase. Wing prime does nothing. Oh no! The Screamer Killer. I make two, so I take one. It did not work out very well. Screamer Killer takes the Ballistas down to nine wounds remaining. And now you're Neuro Tyrant. Neuro Tyrant squad into the Phobos Lieutenant. Tyrant takes him to one wound. The Neurogaunts now, and Steve saves them all. Why? Why are the dice hating me today? <laughs> Norris lives! Norris lives! But you know what? Norris would live. Norris would live. Lieutenant Norris is a hero, damn it. How dare you even insinuate that he will at all die? Norris will live in every game, through every role, all the time. Now I get to fight back. Dreadnought has its little armored feet, and I kick you with my little armored booties. <laughs> Threes, what's up? The Ballistus Dread kicks the Screamer Killer in the shins and does two wounds to it. And this is the year of Steve. The return of the Steve. <laughs> so everyone's base, so all of my Stern Guard veterans are getting in there. We've got a close combat weapon. Each of them should attack four times, holy Oh. Stern Guard do a couple of wounds to the Prime. He's got a four up field of pain now for the rest of the game. And Norris, the Lieutenant, has killed three Neurogons. And a turn two, and Rebecca's in combat where she wants to be, but Steve still has a trick or two up his sleeve. Scores one to one, both players have a command point. This should be an interesting turn three. So I think for this next round, I need to keep on top of Steve's units. But I also just wanna get some payback. I think I need, if he falls back, I need to chase him down. What I also did is was I went and stole some of his dice because he's been rolling so hot and I'm gonna rub them with mine and see if that helps at all. <laughs> all right, so each of us gain a command point. Steve's using Tactical Doctor now. That's gonna allow him to fall back and still shoot and charge. So then I move to Battle Shock. I have to Battle Shock with the Singular Infernus Marine. Mm -hmm. That single Infernus Marine is now Battle Shocked. Oath of Moment into the Screamer Killer now. Steve's gonna get reroll everything against it. It's gonna take a little bit of doing. I'm gonna Oath of Moment the Screamer Killer. And hopefully with all of my guns and all of my attacks, I can bring it down. So I'm going to use one of my army's abilities and I'm going to use Shadow in the Warp. Ooh. Which means you have to do a battle shock test for every unit on the board. So we'll start with the five man unit of Inferno Here we go. Uh, five, six, seven, eight. Goes down to seven, it's good. Other Inferno Squad is already battle shock. So my Terminator Squad. The Terminators fail. Steve is contemplating insane bravery here and decides against it. They really don't need objective control at this point. My captain over there. Uh, five, six, seven, he's good with a six. The Dreadnought. Uh, the Ballistus Dread fails. Steve's gonna use his command point on insane bravery on the Dreadnought to ignore. He's down to one command point remaining. The Apothecary, the Stern Guard, and Lieutenant Norris all succeed. Continuing on with my movement phase. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the Infernus Marines in the back. The Stern Guard fall back out of combat. The Dread also falls back, as well as Lieutenant Norris. Okay, uh, so then we'll go into shooting. So my Infernus Marines at the back of the board here. Three of them are gonna shoot into the Ripper squads. One of them is gonna shoot into the Tyranid uh, Prime with me. So uh, D6 shots into the Tyranid Prime. Huh. Fives. Four up. 
No, so you fail, and then you have a four up, feel no pain. So on a four up, you ignore. No. Two. So you take another wound. Furnace Marines, target the Rippers. We're gonna go to my Terminator Captain, and it's gonna shoot everything at the Neuro Tyrant unit. Terminator Captain shooting the Neurogons, no joy. Then I'm gonna take the Infernus uh, model, the one guy, and he's gonna de he's gonna shoot his Pyro Blaster at the Neuro Tyrant unit as well. Single Infernus Marine fails to wound the Dreadnought, and it's gonna shoot everything into the hunt into the Screamer Killer. Missiles firing the Cracked missiles. Dread into the Screamer Killer now. The Screamer Killer re-rolling a four-up save down to one command point for Rebecca, and it succeeds. So I'm gonna spend a CP, and I'm gonna use Rapid Regeneration on my Screamer. Now feeling no pain on fives or better, the Screamer Killer needs to make one five-up on eight dice. It makes three. It is still up. So it has three wounds remaining. Uh, so then uh, Norris is gonna shoot back at the Neural Guns. Norris is popping Neurogaunts like bubble wrap now. Two wounds, six up saves, and she makes one. And then all my Stern Guard veterans are gonna shoot your Tyranid Prime Force. Here we go. And then uh, Stern Guard Bolt Rifles. Stern Guard into the Wing Prime. Two mortals, it's down to two wounds left. Two wounds remaining. All of my Terminators are gonna shoot into the Barb Guns. Storm Bolters. Terminators go to the Barb Gaunts and one goes down. Oh, poor Babs. All right, so charges. My Stern Guard veterans are gonna charge your turn to prime. In I go. Captain charges the Screamer Killer, he's in. Terminators charge the Screamer Killer, they're in. Norris back into the Neuro Gaunts, he's in. Stern Guard veterans are going into the Tyranid Prime. Stern Guard fighting the Winged Prime. Five wounds, fours, and fours to save him. Does he live? One wound left. He's still up. I am going to go with my captain. So, hit me on twos. Rerolling because you are the Oaths of Moment. So, I'm wounding on fives. Reroll. Thank goodness for Oaths of Moment. Giving him those rerolls, four wounds, six up who ignore, no joy, down it goes. Screamer Killer is dead. Out it goes. Get All it right, out of town. Out of there. Oh no! And the captain does it! Oh, the captain does it. I love this thing. All right, Norris! Norris! <laughs> On twos? On four. Threes, actually. How about two up? <laughs> no. I lo you lose four Neurogons. Do you want to roll your six attacks on your Tyranid Prime? Yes. Tyranid Prime kills two Stern Guard. All your attacks are Norris. Take down Lieutenant Norris. Never. On threes. Woo, a six and a four and a one. Here we go. Oh, two of them. Two of them, oh boy. So threes, I make them both. Gosh, go Norris, go. darn it! Six attacks, Six attacks from the Neuro Tyrant. Yeah. Neuro Tyrant time. Three five up ignores and. <laughs> nope, no, no, he dies. Yes! Uh, Take Norris, that, Norris! Down goes Norris! Whatever, so... Rebecca. Okay, whatever. So I'm gonna consolidate towards this objective. Totally. So that's the end of my turn. So now we go to your turn. End of Steve's turn three, and wow, the Screamer Killer is down, but the Psychophage is right there. The Dreadnought, though, is still a big time threat. I wonder what Rebecca's gonna do. End of Steve's three sees a score of two to one in his favor, with one command point to Rebecca's zero. Rebecca turned three now. Steve goes up to two command points. Rebecca goes up to one. Rebecca has to test Battleshock on that lone Termagon as he's below half and she uses insane bravery for one command point to automatically pass the test. That is huge, as it's gonna be a victory point. Out of command points, but in the lead, three to two. So I lost my Screamer in that round, but I did gain another objective point. So technically I'm actually winning at the moment. So I haven't lost hope yet. I just need to keep grinding, keep rolling those dice and hope that things turn tables for me. You can give your Synapse tokens to two units within 12 inches. 
So yeah, you give it to the psychophage and the barb because the barby barby gons. Moving time. Okay. Movement phase now. Not a lot of movement for her to do. Just time to blast away. Let's go. We're gonna do what everyone's waiting for: is the barbs yeah. against the terminator. The terminators are still a huge pain in the tyranid neck. So I need to turn my barbagons on the terminators and hopefully wipe out as many as I can. <sighs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> barbagons firing into the terminators with 18 shots. Let's go, sixes sustained hits. Get them terminators. You got this. 14 dice scores only five wounds. Oh no. Two ups. I passed them all, but I get all tangled up. I'm minus two to my movement and I'm also minus two to my charge rolls too. Neuro Tyrant. Captain. I'm going to target the captain. Seven. Seven shots now into the captain. Needs force to wound. Okay, so if I roll three ones and twos, he dies. Hey, I've been rolling lots of yeah, ones and it's twos. Very possible. So. <laughs> he dies. Oh, yay! Yeah. I'm down to one command. What point do you now. have to roll? If I roll a three or above, he lives. And if I get a one or a two again, he dies. One third chance. A one third chance. Ha! Oh, oh, yes! Yes, yes! That's yeah, rough. Yeah. Man, it feels good. Here comes the psychophage. Two. On six, threes, fours. Uh, no, he dies. Bye bye. Doing work. Charge phase. All right. Uh, yes. Ten. Uh, Five plus one. Hitting on threes. Uh, I am. Here we go. Here we are. Ah. Oh, bollocks. <laughs> Two whole hits and no wounds. Fails them both. Shoot. Sucks. Time for Stern Guard Veterans. I'm attacking your Tyranid Prime with my Stern Guard Veterans. Stern Guard wound the Prime and she shrugs it. I'm going to fight you. Hear that? This is your demise. Shake it up. Is it? I'm going to wait. Oh, no, it's fine. Keep going. Threes. Again, your demise is getting shaken up. Threes, huh? Four ups. Another stern guard goes down. Oh yeah, the dreadnought has to fight. Here it is. In we go. Here we go on fives. I wound you twice. Ones and twos. Here That's we, we go. Ones and twos. Ah, you fail one. Four to two. Huh. Six. Nope, not at all. You know, we, we both lost quite a bit. I lost my captain. You lost your uh, screamer killer. Wow, what a turn. It's getting to be a bit of a bloodbath. End of turn three sees a score of three to two in Rebecca's favor. Steve has one command point, Rebecca has none. I'm actually excited. Like now we're so close together that you might get a lot more people take, or you might get a lot more of your army taken off this board. All right, so at uh, command phase, each of us gain a command point. Woohoo! I am going to spend one command point. Steve's turn four, he's using adaptive strategy for one command point, takes him down to one, but that's gonna put tactile doctrine on the dread so he can fall back and shoot. Both players sit at one command point. I've got to connect with the stupid barb guns. So I'm gonna trigger the assault doctrine for everything in advance, because I can advance and charge in the assault doctrine. Barb guns are targeted for oath of moment, Steve has to test Battleshock for the Stern Guard and they succeed. He scores two victory points this turn. That puts him into the lead. What a seesaw battle, four to three, as we head to Steve's movement phase. So uh, the Stern Guard vets are going to fall back and they're gonna fall back towards this objective here. Furnace Marines here are gonna just walk forward with a normal move. The uh, Terminators are gonna advance one whole inch. Not great. Steve's out of command points here to try to get the Terminators close with the reroll advance. Those barb guns are strong. The dreaded tactile dropped and backs up and looks to unload. Uh, four of my Infernus Marines can get within range of your Tyranid Prime. Shooting into the Prime from the Infernus Marines, and finally, down it goes. The Winged Tyrant went down, which is unfortunate, but he did manage to do some damage to his Stern Guard, so I was happy about that. He did. He did. He Good. did. Dreadnought splits fire to the Lone Termagon and the Psychophage. It's like overkill. <laughs> ah, <shoot>. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Threes. A Storm Bolter rounds. Oh, really wants to win. Seven four ups. You can do this. 
I'm so sorry. It's just such, <laughs> such overkill. He's like, he's looking up at me like, why? <laughs> have please, I been, please. Have, have I been good to you? <laughs> Roll it up. Oh no. Mommy, no. <laughs> Why are you doing this? Oh, it's so dead. Oh. Sorry. Okay, bye. Bye, Termy. The gaunt goes down, that's huge, and the cycle phase takes two wounds. So then next, I go to the charge phase. My terminators are gonna charge into your Barbie gaunts. Terminators charge the Barb Gaunts. Rebecca overwatches with Psychic Scream from the Nero Tyrant as it auto hits to try to put a hurt on him. Ooh, a six out of four. Ooh, 10 hits. I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Oh. Well, that's pretty good. So that's not it. Uh, so I'm going to threes. Here we are. Uh, so I fail two. So I ki you kill one Terminator and wound another. There, are, I'm minus two to this because of the stupid tangling that the Barbie guns gave me. The Terminators are slow now, real slow. Those Barb guns, man, like if you have a unit that is like five inches or four inches of movement, you, it is over. Four and above. Oh, I saw the two and I panicked, but oh. it's a six. So <laughs> They'll go first, because they're the only things anyways. We'll start with the Terminators. The Barbie Gaunts get Terminator slapped now, and they are all picked up. Whew, just knew that was gonna happen. Those Terminators hit hard. Neurogaunts are the tyrant now. No wounds, but she still holds that objective because of objective control. The damn brain bug can actually hold on to an objective. Okay, so currently the score is 4-3 at the end of as of the end of your turn. What a big turn on turn four for Steve. Lots of cleanup here, but I think his extra units are gonna pull this one out for him. Rebecca needs to score as much as she can, and I'm not sure if she can even take down the dread with the way the dice have been rolling. Score is four to three in Steve's favor at the end of his turn four. Neither player has any command points. Rebecca turn four now, both players gain a command point. Everybody has synapse range and battle shock is passed all around. Rebecca uses Endless Swarm on those Neurogaunts. That might actually keep them around and hold that objective. She does score one more victory point to make our game a tie through four. So looking at the board where everything is at right now, I think the best thing to do is to draw back that Psychophage to the unattended objective point and maybe just try to hold that to gain another point. Now I can shoot. Yeah. So I'm gonna use my Psychophage to shoot your stern veteran garden. Psychophage manages to kill a stern guard. The Nero Tyrant shoots the Terminators. Steve responds with Armor of Contempt for one command point. That's gonna let him save on twos. Oh no. I got two up saves. Down goes another Terminator though. Terminators go first in the fight phase here and this is important. If she holds, I think she can pull this victory off. So this is on fours. To on twos. So six of them die and one of them is left over. And then the Librarian on threes. Oh no, the Neurogons are white. A Terminator's wounded, but they hit just hard enough. Yes, that is the stuff. Oh, it makes me feel all tingly. It's tantalizing, I can feel it. <sighs> it feels good. I think that's all I can do, right? Yeah. End of round four, it's a tie game, 4-4, four, four, with both players have a command point, but this may be it. The Neuro Tyrant only gains three objective control points, and it's not enough to control the objective over Steve's army that's in there. Steve scores three on primary, and with only two units left on the board, and no way to effectively table Steve, I think that's where they're gonna call it. So that means I only have two units left, and I can't catch his three-point lead, which is so unfortunate. However, it was a good game. What a game. Seven to five is your final. That was amazingly close. Rebecca knew those Terminators were gonna be her death and she did everything to try to stop them from getting to her. Ultimately though, Dice tell stories and their story today was Ultramarine victory. Congratulations, Steve, on your victory and thank you both for a fantastic contest. 
A special thanks, of course, to you for watching. If you like what we do, please consider supporting us through YouTube membership or Patreon. You'll get exclusive releases as well as behind-the-scenes interviews, early access to most of our shows, and access to our Discord, the most happening 40K community around. That's it for us here at Play On. As always, this is JT McDowell saying, until the next time we see you in the far-flung future of a grim dark universe, Play On! Five is the final. It's a clean win, great game, back and forth. I, I cannot say how happy I am and lucky I am to get to play this game with Rebecca here in the studio. My first game of 10th edition, I got to play with my best friend. I really love trying out this version of 40K because not only did it bring in some new Tyranid warriors, aliens, bugs, disgusting looking things, it simplified the rules for me, which there's a Anyone who's tried 40K will know that there are a lot of rules. It can be a little bit intimidating. 10th edition feels really great. And so I think, uh, I, was, I know I was a little bit nervous in the lead up to it. All the big changes uh, to the game make me a little bit nervous, but you know what? I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about this. I think 10th is gonna be a great edition, if not one of the best editions of 40K that I've ever put out. Thank you to everyone at the Play On Studio for having me here. I'm excited to be invited back. Hopefully I'll have a little more grasp on the rules and I'll come back with a better dice rolling luck.